just just recap and on Sherman's testimony, you know, we go to the uh, fires that but we don't go to any fires that God walks us through them. And he's right there all the time. He pulls us out and it gets two breaks. So I'm just gonna say this song called Fire.
the little thing she handed me. The preacher's Sunday sermon was, Forgive your enemies. Toward the end of the service, he asked the congregation, How many of you have forgiven your enemies? Well, about half of the hands went up. He then repeated the question as it uh, got nearer to lunchtime. And it was amazing, the hands went up to about 80%. And then he repeated the question again uh, when it was about five minutes past the time to normally get out. It was amazing, all responded except for one small little elderly lady, Mrs. Jones. The preacher looked at her and he said, are you not willing to forgive your enemies? She said, I don't have any. And she smiled sweetly. <coughs> Mrs. Jones, that's very unusual. How old are you anyway? I'm 93 years old. Oh, Mrs. Jones, what a blessing. And what a lesson to us. You are 93, and yet you do not have a single person in 93 years that you have not forgiven. The little sweet lady tottered down the aisle, came up to the pastor, he gave her a hug, and she simply said, no, I've outlived them all. <laughs> I read that in a little bit. Get the kinks out if you like. Get your Bibles. Get ready. We're going to honor the Word of God. And uh, there you go. You're all standing up good. Well, that's not water going to be done. We're done. Uh, all right. Here we go. Okay, so take your Bibles. Hold them up high. Say it with all of your heart. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same, never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. You sound good today. You may be seated. We're going to be looking in the book of Romans. The book of Romans, written by the Apostle Paul uh, to Christians everywhere. And uh, we're going to be looking at chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Romans chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. I'll give you a chance to get there. One more time. Romans chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. The Word of God says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and the wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what we may, since what may be known about God is very plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, and His divine nature having clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him 
nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made that look like the immortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over to sinful desires in their hearts, to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They ex exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, men abandoned their natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another, men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to depraved minds to do what, not, what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing more evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree they, that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Whew. Let's fire ahead. Lord, we come to you and pray and we acknowledge first of all that it is impossible for anybody to take these verses in a short period of time and tell everything that needs to be told about it couldn't happen if you preach 40 sermons and not cover it well Lord, we are daunted with the task today that this is an important message for our day and we should look upon it. So bless the reading of the Word. Speak through us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I have had people ask me, do I think it is unfair that there are people who don't know and have not heard about Jesus that will perish in hell. Do I think it's unfair? Uh, according to the scripture here, no. The scripture is very clear that you can see God literally in everything in this world. God has made His presence known. The Creator is seen in the creation. You can see the hand of God in His work. You cannot go to the California Redwoods. You cannot go to the Pacific Ocean. You cannot go to the beautiful waterfalls prevailing into the streams. You cannot go to the snow-capped mountains. You cannot possibly go to the glaciers and all the other parts of the world and not see the hand of God has been at work. You see the work by the handiwork of God. God made certain that we could see Him in His creation. That is why 
literally on every continent in the world and as they go back and find more and more civilizations, people that speak other languages, people of tribes and people of uh, uh, other origins, small countries, they are finding that every single one of them, when you look back at their history, have seen God. They have tried somehow to make images of God. They have made gods out of wood gods out of stone. They have taken creatures and made God to look like uh, uh, animals and birds and humans. Why? Because something instilled in man's heart from the time of creation has been this. There is a God. He is a real God. He is a living God. He is the true God. And we must worship Him. Yet, sinful man has continually refused to worship God. They have said that if you worship God somehow, you're foolish. If you worship God somehow, you have been maligned or you've been tricked or you're believing old wives' tales. If you believe in God, someone is controlling you. And on, and on, and on, and on. Our governments, they control the power on earth. Laugh at God. Because they want God's power. But one of these days, the Scripture says, it says that the chief captains, the mighty men, the kings of the earth, will bow down and cry out to God and plead with God for His mercy. When He comes back, every knee will bow. That's what the Scripture says. Amen. Amen. No one will be exempted. Everyone will see the power and the awesome reality, the righteousness and the holiness of God. The problem is, it will be for eternity too late. Too late. This scripture here speaks volumes, and I literally mean volumes, about our relationship with God. And it's very clear that our relationship with God has put God either in second place or God in no place. God will either be God of all or He will be God, not God at all. And you need to remember that. The invisible God is alive and well and has revealed Himself clearly to the human race. And the human race will answer to Him when He comes back again. The glory of the Lord will appear when Jesus separates the sheep and the goats, when he separates salt souls from sheep and goats, when he separates us from the goats and the sheep, and he takes us to heaven or he takes us to hell, that day will be a day in which his glory is revealed. It says here he will be glorified on that day. Now it says this in this particular scripture, and I want you to hear this talking about the sin that has come upon the human race because we will not glorify and we will not acknowledge uh, God Himself. It says, Therefore God gave them over to sinful desires, the desires of a sinful heart, to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies, with one another. They have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And they have served the created things rather than the creator of those things who is forever to be praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for one another. 
In the same way, men abandoned their natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with, one, with other men and received in themselves a new penalty for their perversion. Now, friends, I don't know how you could read that scripture and not understand it. It's just about as clear and to the point as it can be made. And it is written for us to understand. And yet, many in this world can't understand it. Oh, maybe I should say it this way. Don't want to understand it. Many in this world believe something else. Let me put this into very simple words that you can understand. He says, because of the sinfulness of mankind, that God has given us over to depraved minds to do say things which should not be done and things which are disgusting to Him. And out of that, He picks two things to make a real big point to. Now see, first of all, God created sex. I want you to know that. It says very clearly and very specifically that when God created man, He created woman. And woman was to be the helpmate of the man. The two would work together. It says that the two would become one sex. This is truly a sexual uh, symbol of what is going to happen when they are married and they have children. The two of them, male and female, can have a child. And that's the way God went. Now they're trying to figure out other ways to do it in a test tube. But God's desire was for man and woman to be married, for the two of them to have children, and to raise them in a home with a mother and with a father. That's what God wants. And yet in this world today, men are mocked. And women are told that as a woman, if they allow a man to be in the house, somehow they have lowered themselves. They ought to go out and work like a man, which I'm not against women working. Please don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you, women, don't ever give up the gift that God gave you to have a child, to give birth to a child, to nurture a child, to raise a child, to love a child. Amen. You were given a gift from God, a mother nature inside of you. Man doesn't have. Listen, I raised two kids by myself. And I put into my heart I was going to do it. They needed to be raised in a good home. But i got to tell you, it was the hardest thing I ever did in this world. It was hard. It was harder than a job. Uh, it was. Women have this ability to make a feather nest, to take an old coal house and make it into a wonderful warm home, to provide love and nurture for that family that a man doesn't have. But on the other hand, the man is a religious and righteous leader of that family. He also is a breadwinner and a defender of the home. The two of them work together to raise children. Don't give that up. Men, don't give that up. Women, don't let people browbeat you into believing something else. It's not true. What they're saying is not true. They're trying to make you not be what God calls you to be. Now back to what it says here. It says, women and men were created, first of all, it's a sexual thing, but then to be married and to have children and to raise them. That's, that's a good thing. That's what God wanted. In fact, if you read scriptures, you're going to find out that it says it's not right for men and women to be immoral. By that, I'm simply meaning they are not supposed to go out and have sex with other ones who are not their husband or their wife. That's what the scripture says. Yet today, in the modern world, 
uh, people are being taught and it's being uh, very much taught and promoted in schools that, uh, hey, you don't need to get married. You can live together, check each other out, try it out for a while, see if you're made for each other. I've heard all the things. I remember when, when the, the old immorality first was called the new morality. The new morality is nothing more than the old immorality with a, with a mask on. God never wanted to have men and women in sexual relationship outside of marriage, period. You're not supposed to shack up, and that's what it is. Now it goes further. This scripture says it very plain. It's hard almost to read it when you have children and other people in the room, but, uh, but you have to read it as a pastor. If I don't tell you about this, if I don't say something, and I have to be honest with you, uh, I'm going to answer for it. The scripture is very clear. It says this. Women will give up their natural relations with other women. In other words, they're going to become lesbians. Can I say it any clearer than that? Women are going to become lesbians. They're not going to want a man. They don't want to have a man. They don't want to be married to a man. They don't even want to sleep with a man. They're going to have a relationship with women. They're going to be lesbians. Back then that word hadn't been invented, but today you could translate it. They gave up their natural relationship with other with a man to have a relationship with women and be lesbians. And then it says, men will give up their natural relations with other, with women to have relationships with men. And then it goes a little further and it says, they will burn with lust for men. In other words, they will not want a woman. They will not want to sleep with a woman. They won't want to have sex with a woman. They won't want to shack up with a woman. They won't want to be in a woman's house. They want a man. There are a lot of scriptures about this. They didn't use the term we use today because that term had not been invented. But it's very clear. Go back and read this story about Lot. Remember how Lot had pitched his tent toward uh, Sodom? When young, very young, he got to choose between the rich land, the easy land, and the hard stuff. And uh, he decided to take the easy way. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. And there he raised his family and his kids. The problem when you pitch your tent toward sin is you have to compromise your standard to live there. Okay? He compromised his standard to live there. It didn't affect him. He was a righteous man, but it affected his children and his family. God said for them to move. And he prayed and he begged and he pleaded that if they would just find a few righteous people, God would not destroy their city. There, there weren't enough. If you remember the story, uh, Sodom, we get the name Sodom today from that town, which is where we get the word sodomy. Sodomy is a term for sex between men, that's exactly where you get it from, that's called sodomy. It comes from the term Sodom, the town of Sodom, and it's about this story which is in the Bible. Uh, these people that lived in that town, lots of them, many of them, uh, were men that wanted to have sex with men. And uh, anyway, the story says that two angels came to try to get Sodom and his family out of there. And when the angels came, and by the way, just so I can clear this up with you, uh, as a rule, uh, and I, I don't find a single scripture that says that angels have wings, by the way. Uh, I'm not saying that angels can have wings, but it, there are lots of scriptures in the Bible that talk about angels, and it talks about them coming at, as a person. In fact, it tells us to entertain strangers 
Because sometimes when you're entertaining strangers, you don't realize it, but you may have entertained an angel. Mm -hmm. So angels come like regular human beings. If you remember that story in the Bible, uh, the angels came and they wanted to be there with Sodom, but no. they Why? were the, they they were told by the men there they won't have sex with them, basically. And uh, they they tried to they, they it was terrible, and uh, they they were even offered Lot even offered to send his daughters out. He knew he did. they didn't want his daughters. They wanted men. And uh, how sad we can become when we live near sin. You remember the story? God said, "Get out of there and do it now, and don't look back." And they turned and they left a handful. And his wife thought about all of her friends, thought about all of her relationships, thought about all the things she had there, and she they were more important to her than God was. And she turned her back. And she was turned into a pillar of salt. And she was dead. It's a tough thing when you go against God. When you go against God, God always will have the last word. Because these people, the shameful acts, these women with other women, unnatural relations, they exchange for natural ones. In the same way the men abandoned their natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for another man, committing indecent acts with other men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. And then he goes on to say furthermore, and then he's just going to say here, let me just say the rest of the stuff. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to depraved minds. You know what a depraved mind is? It is an evil mind that continually thinks of other ways to do evil things that are even worse. A depraved mind to do what not what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy and murder and strife and deceit and malice. They are gossips, they are slanderers, they're God haters. They're insolent, they're arrogant, and they're boastful. They are people that find ways to invent even more evil ways of doing things. They are disobedient to their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that they who do such things deserve death, they do not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice it. We live in a wicked world. Let's just, let's just say it very clearly. It's a wicked world. The good news is we have a Savior and Jesus that can forgive us and release us from the wickedness in this world. Man. There is a peace that passes understanding when you come to the Lord and you confess that you need His help. When you confess that you need your sins forgiven. When you confess you need to be saved. When you lay it at the cross at the feet of Jesus, there is a freedom, a, there is a release that you cannot even explain. But it's real. I look back in my life and I did some things that I'm very shameful for, but God does not beat me up for those things. God gave me a way to escape them, to escape the penalty connected with them, and God gave me the freedom to live for His Son, Jesus. I want to challenge you today. Will you accept that peace 
It passes understanding that it comes only from knowing Jesus. It's for you. Something that uh, Charlotte said early on in her testimony, I heard very clearly, and that was when she had gotten away from God and she had done things that she was ashamed of, she couldn't come back to God for a while because she felt ashamed or she felt guilty. Satan is so unoriginal. He does that to everybody. But I'm telling you, God said He would forgive you, and God said He loves you, and God says He cares about you, and God says He wants to take you to heaven with Him, but you just simply need to accept the free gift that He has given you. Salvation through Christ. Thank I'm going you. to ask you to stand today, and... Uh, I'm going to ask that uh, as you stand that we have uh, Blanche come up. She's going to sing a song and the band's going to come up on the stage. And uh, I'm going to ask you to think about your life. Where are you right now with the Lord? Where are you? Is everything okay? Is everything right? Does the Lord live in your heart? Have your sins been forgiven? Are there areas that there are big question marks about? Well, today I've got good news. You can come down here to an altar and kneel, and the Holy Spirit will be here, and God will reach in and touch your heart and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But you have to make the move, and you have to say yes. So we're going to sing together after Blanche first of all sings. And